I'm going to talk about long distance running. <laughs> Hello everyone, my name is Chi, and today I will be talking about long distance running and uh, stuff about it, stuff about me, uh, why I love it, and how it's impacted my life. So I'll start with uh, my props. So you need your water, you need to stay hydrated. Uh, I used to have long hair, so I used to use the headbands all the time to keep like, my things out of my face and stuff. And I like running with chucks just because I like using like most of the muscles in my legs, you know, the, like the least support possible from shoes. So I actually run with these. Like This is real life right here. <laughs> all right. So a little bit about me <clears throat> and how I got acquainted with long distance running. Uh, I remember um, when I was a kid, I loved running outside. I loved climbing trees. I, I loved being active. I, my mom never really got me a game console because she always wanted us to like go outside and like do something, you know. And, I love her for that because it really shaped like my lifestyle. Um, I think it was fifth grade when I started noticing that I was pretty fast compared to other kids. And um, this is kind of a personal thing for me, why long distance running uh, really became important in my life. Uh, I used to get bullied a lot as a kid. Um, I don't know why, but kids just like messing with me. And I remember, I think it was in fifth grade when I realized that running was like my way out of situations. Like whenever somebody wanted to beat me up, I could run away. And, <laughs> and, um, and not just that, but it did a lot for my self-esteem too, you know. Um, whenever I'd get beat up by a bully or whatever, I could look him in the face and be like, you can hit me all you want, but I'm faster than you, you know? And, <laughs> Uh, that helped me get through middle school, and it helped me get through high school. You know, whenever I wanted to do something stupid, I'd go run for miles and miles, and then I'd come home too tired to do anything. Um, and um, it helped me get into a good college my first year. Uh, it helped me make a lot of friends. I was varsity cross country and track since freshman year of high school. It was a great stress outlet. It, it, it really shaped who I am today, and I still do it. I, I love running, and um, yeah. So I'll get into the history of long distance running. Long distance running dates back as far as human evolution does. Actually, if you look at the human physique, we have evolved from running all the way back to hunting and gathering, you know, when it was all about survival of the fittest, you know. If, if, if your genes went towards the direction of you being fast, you being able to run away from prey, or from predators, and you being able to catch a prey, your genes were most likely going to go on to the next generation, you know. You're going to be able to make, live long enough to have kids. Um, and then uh, more uh, recent, uh, but still a really long time ago, uh, modern long distance running dates back as far as 700 BC, kind of in the in the Greek uh, Greek area. Um, it, it, it's all over Greek culture, um, and that's how the birth of the Olympics came to be. Um, uh, in 1896, the first ever organized marathon took place in honor of Theodes, which was this mythical, nobody really knows if he existed, but he was, a, he was like this mythical soldier who ran like the first marathon ever all the way to Athens to tell about this victory that happened. And because he was the first guy ever to do it without proper training, the story goes that as soon as he got to Athens and de delivered the message, he, he died on the spot. But uh, supposedly that was 24 miles, 24.89 miles. And 
1921, uh, the official marathon distance was established to be 26.2 miles by the International Amateur Athletic Federation. Just a fun fact. Uh, so from there, uh, I will jump into the benefits of long distance running. Uh, many conducted studies uh, from you know UCLA, UC Irvine, um, they all have their independent studies. Uh, this one is actually from pitjournal.edu, uh, but uh, they they've all conducted similar studies and get to the sim uh, similar results, which is you know. Uh, long distance running helps with your mood, it helps with depression, anxiety, just it, it helps you get in a better mind state. Um, and it also helps reduce the risk of heart disease and you know, diabetes and all that, all that type of stuff. Um, and then, let's see, uh, a lot of people think, uh, how do you get to turn this into a lifestyle, how to turn it into a habit. How do you get good at it? The same way you do with everything else. You start slow, uh, taking the first step is half the battle, you know, making a choice, you know, I'm gonna go for a run today instead of watching TV, or, you know, I'm gonna go for a walk, I'm gonna go call a friend, you know, some, sometimes doing it with a friend is, is is helpful, you know, it's a, it's a way to get out of your comfort zone and, and get out there. Um, set goals, stick to a schedule um, that has room for gradual improvement, so you don't want to go run miles on your first try because you're most likely going to get shin splints or something. I, I did that. <laughs> uh, and uh, fuel before running. Um, I remember our coach used to tell us all the time, you know, what you put in your body is the gas that makes you go. You know, you wouldn't put 87 gasoline in a Ferrari, would you? No, you want to put the good stuff in there because you want to go fast. Um, and then, you know, just for my conclusion, you know, long distance running has many benefits to it. Um, I know for me, it, it's helped me both mentally and physically. Uh, I do it. Every other day, it helps me get through my stress. Whenever I want to get away from my problems, I go to the gym and I work out for hours and, and it makes me happy. And I think that if you take the time to find out what makes you comfortable um, with long distance running, you can, you can, find, you can find something there. Uh, yeah, if you give it a shot, it can become a very rewarding lifestyle <laughs> for you as well. Thank you. All right, so Saul, what did you think? Yeah, so I just want to start off by saying, you know, the attention device. Um, I feel like you could use some of your personal experiences to use it as an attention device, because a lot of those things were really, like, kind of, you said some funny stuff, you said some important stuff that could have kind of introduced this to your topic. And then as well, going into your topic identification, um, you kind of merged it with your thesis, but your thesis was kind of a little confusing on the way you were going to go through and talk about it, but you did end up talking about like um, your personal, and you talked about like um, some statistics as well, and then you also went into the history. Um, for the history, I felt like you should have had more citations in that than um, when you were talking about like what benefits long distance gives you. And then I definitely believe your conclusion was a little, little bit more well put. Um, you finished it off by talking about um, kind of wrapping everything up with history, your personal experience, and also your statistics. So it kind of merged all three in one. Kind of remind us of what you're talking about. Your visuals, um, I felt like once you put on your um, headband, that was kind of an attention grabber too, because we were kind of looking at you putting it on as well. Um, going into your shoes and your water, I definitely felt like uh, maybe some other visuals could have been used as well. Let's talk about that. 
and then some of your transitions as well were kind of um, well put, like when you kind of went into your, um, your the history and then went into some statistics, it kind of went well put, but when you started talking about like your personal experience with history, that didn't transition as well. So those were some of the key stuff I was looking at as well. All right. Well, let me talk about a couple of things that I <clears throat> thought worked pretty well with the speech and then a couple of things that are a little bit problematic. Uh, we know what your topic is early on, but the way in which you tell us what the topic is is a little dry and obvious. Uh, my name is Chi and I'm going to be talking about running. That, that, that ignores most of the advice that we gave you about attention devices and opening the speech and that seems like it's a, a mistake at the beginning of the speech. You're setting us up for something that's a little bit more mundane than it ought to be. I think that you actually have an advantage in talking about this from personal experience because you are enthusiastic about the subject, uh, you've got good stories to tell on your own, and I think that that's, that's the strong part of the speech that, ma that helps make things interesting in the presentation. I, I, I like the idea, look, I could run away from the bullies, and even when the ones I couldn't run away from you know, managed to pound on me, I always felt a little superior to them because I'm faster than they were. I, I like that idea. I think that that's uh, one of those things that makes the speech more uh, involving for us. But it seems strange, for instance, that you have to look down and read so much of that. You're telling us your own personal stories, and you're having to kind of look down and, and keep checking your notes repeatedly on that. I think you had a preview at the beginning of the speech, but it was rushed by so quickly that I'm not exactly sure what all the parts were. And as I was listening to the speech, I, I wasn't quite clear. I mean, I knew there was one section where we're talking about the history of running, and that's about the one distinct part of the speech that I could remember. I know that there are other things that are going on as well. The visuals that you had are not particularly notable. Um, they're okay at the beginning. I think you could have used them a little bit more as a detention device, for instance, like uh, Saul's talking about putting on the headband. I, I think you might uh, do something like that. You put on the headband and say, you know, in case I start sweating from the forehead while I'm running, I want to be able to keep the sweat out of my eyes. And boy, you know, if I start getting dehydrated, it's a good thing that I've got all this water with me because I'm going to be able to rehydrate myself. Unfortunately, I'm not running barefoot. In fact, I'm running in these, which are, you know, you kind of mentioned that these shoes, are, there's something distinctive about them that helps you exercise more parts of your body as a consequence. I thought, okay, well, that'll come up again, and it never came up again. There was never any discussion about it, so I'm not exactly sure why it's there. Um, and, then, and then that's the last that there's any reference to material in the speech other than your stories. So the stories are good. The idea that you have, I think, for the start of the speech is there. It's just not as accomplished as it needs to be. Um, there, uh, there's some reference to vague studies that were being done about what the benefits are of running. Um, I think you need to be a little bit more specific in those kinds of things. The history is the one place where there's the most specific information and you, you give us uh, background about uh, the original marathon and then uh, the Olympic movement and the way they kind of redefined what the Olympic, uh, what the marathon is. I, I like that and that, that I thought was the the section in the speech that was most developed with content outside of your experience and you needed to have a little bit more of those sorts of things in the presentation. Alright, I'm going to stop there. <laughs>